The donkey and the load of salt. A merchant had bought a bag of salt at the seashore. He was going back home with his donkey with a heavy load of salt. In front of them, there was a shallow river. They had crossed it many times before. Well, now let us cross the river, the merchant said to the donkey. When they got halfway over the river, the donkey tumbled over. When the merchant helped him up, a lot of the salt on his back had melted away. The donkey thought, Yay! The salt on my back melted away! The bag is much lighter! Because much of the salt was gone, the merchant had to go to the seashore again and get another bag of salt the next day. Now they came back to the river to return home. We must cross this river, the merchant said. But the donkey had a sly idea to get rid of the salt. I have a good idea. I will fall on the river again. Then the salt will be gone away. He fell on the river again, and most of the salt on his back melted away. Then the merchant thought, Oh, I see. The donkey is trying to fool me. He falls off because he wants to melt the salt away. Now the merchant was angry. He bought large bales of cotton and put them on the back of the donkey. I can melt these too. I will slip off again, the donkey thought. When they got to the middle of the river, he fell over again. But when he got to his feet again, the cotton had soaked water from the river and gotten much heavier. Poor Donkey had to go back home with a load ten times heavier. The Shepherd Boy and the Wolf Once upon a time, there was a shepherd boy who looked after his master's sheep on a pasture near the forest. Uh, I am really bored. I want to do something fun, the boy said to himself. One day, he was thinking about what he would do should he meet a wolf. Then, a naughty idea came to his head. <laughs> I can have some fun. The villagers would come to help him if he yelled out, Wolf! Wolf! There was not one wolf around him, but the boy ran down to the village and yelled, Wolf! There is a wolf! Hearing this, the villagers were surprised. Quickly, they ran over to the pasture to keep the flock of sheep. When they got there, they only found the boy rolling on the pasture with a burst of laughter. A few days passed. The boy was bored, and he wanted to play his trick on the villagers again. Wolf! Wolf! The villagers ran to help him, but only found that they were fooled again. Naughty boy, they said. Some days later, on one evening, the boy was with his flock of sheep. The forest was getting dark. 
Then a growling came from behind the forest. It was really a wolf. Horrified, the boy ran across the pasture and shouted to the villagers, "Wolf! Wolf! It is a real wolf!" The villagers didn't trust the boy. He must be fooling around again. They said, "That's right. He's only kidding." The wolf killed many of the boy's sheep and went back to his forest. The fox and the crow. One morning, the fox was looking for something to eat in the forest. Then he saw that there was a crow sitting on a tree limb. The fox had seen many crows before, but this time he couldn't take his eyes off of the crow because she had a piece of raw meat in her mouth. I think I can have a meal now. The fox had a sneaky idea. The fox moved closer to the tree that the crow was sitting on, and he said, "Hello over there. What a beautiful bird you are!" But the crow held her meat tight in her mouth and did not move one bit. You are such a beautiful bird. Look at you. Your feathers are gorgeous, and your wings are in such good shape too. You must have a really lovely voice. Sing me a song. I want to hear your voice. If your voice is as wonderful too, I should hail you Queen of Birds. The crow was now very proud. She wanted to be called the queen of birds. The flattering words of the fox made her want to show off her voice. The crow opened her beak to sing a song. Caw caw! Right then, the meat from her mouth fell down into that of the fox. Well, I think you can sing better next time. And thank you for this meal," said the fox as he trotted off. The North Wind and the Sun. One day, the North Wind and the Sun argued over who was stronger. The north wind boasted, "I am stronger than you." "I am strong too," said the sun. "You are not as strong as I," said the wind. "Then let us see who's stronger," said the sun. A traveler was passing along the road. He was wearing a coat. What about this? If you can take off that traveler's coat, you are stronger. But if I take it off first, I am stronger," said the sun. "All right," answered the wind. The north wind growled and howled, and he blew out a cold, strong wind. Oh, what a strong wind! The traveler said, "The ends of the traveler's coat danced about in the wind. He pulled his coat tight onto his body. The wind blew harder and harder. Oh, what strong winds!" The traveler held his coat tight and wrapped it around him. Now I will show you what I can do," said the sun. This time the sun shined. 
gentle sunshine drove out the cold. Oh, now it's nice and warm, the traveler said. He loosened his coat to hang around his shoulders. It got warmer and warmer. Now the traveler wiped the sweat from his face. Now that it was even hotter, he took off his coat. Oh, there's a cool shade under that tree. I'll lie down there for a while, the traveler said. Then he laid himself down under a tree. Now you see who is stronger, said the sun. Oh, this is shameful, muttered the wind. And over he flew to the mountain. The Vain Jackdaw and His Borrowed Feathers One day, a black jackdaw flew over the garden in the king's palace. In the garden, there were many peacocks with colorful feathers. With much wonder, the jackdaw envied the peacocks for their splendid plumes. The jackdaw himself was not a very handsome bird, nor did he have refined manners. But he still thought, I can be like those peacocks too. All I must do is put on some peacock feathers. He picked up some peacock feathers on the ground and stuck them among his own. Now that the jackdaw had finished working with the plumes, he walked strutting among the other jackdaws. He flew over to the peacocks again. Now the peacock should see me and say what a gorgeous bird I am. But the peacocks already knew that the jackdaw was wearing some fake feathers. Thinking how the jackdaw tried to play a trick on them, the peacocks were angry. So they plucked off his borrowed plumes and some of his own feathers as well. The jackdaw was very sad and came back to his own flock. But this was not the end. You put on such airs among us, now here's what you deserve. The other jackdaws pecked and laughed at him. <laughs>